I have a seed. If you think you're going to keep that Instagram, you got a wrong bitch, man. Let's discuss, okay? You've, you've said all what you have to say. I Let me tell you. I ain't said nothing I wanted to say. Uh, Angela, sit down. Ah, damn. It doesn't seem like she's trying to solve anything. Angela and Michael meet face to face after she ripped his car apart and attacked him outside of his house. Ugh, what a mess. Yes, it was. And it's continuing. That's just a goddamn appetizer, mother A nasty one at that. Pull up your goddamn phone. Now, Angela is demanding that Michael give her his phone. For what? So I can look at it, I'm your wife, let me see it. And honestly, y'all, after this episode, I'm done feeling bad for Michael. I know I've probably said that before, but I'm for real this time. And I'll tell you why. Then give me the phone, put it in my pocketbook. You see how simple? Oof, that just sent chills down my spine. You see how simple? <sighs> Let's get into it. Hey, 90 Day Fans fam, it's Melicia. I hope y'all are doing well out there. Before we get into the serious business, let's start this recap off with a good laugh. Jenny and Summit tried some of the new moves they learned in the Kama Sutra class, and apparently it caused Summit to get sick, to a point where they had to call a doctor. And I think Jenny got too excited while doing that cowgirl uh, position, and uh, she sit on me on my stomach and broke my stomach. <laughs> yeah, uh, like a uh, diarrhea. I was in the toilet most of the time, and I don't want to do that again. I'm guessing Summit tried the new move with Jenny on a full stomach. I'm guessing. They taught us that pose, and you, you, you got injured from it. I think we should file a complaint against the instructor. So make sure you weigh people how heavy or how less weight you are before you try any kind of this kind of yoga positions. You should weigh people first, so now you're trying to call me fat now. Yes, you, yeah, are. Like, yes, you are. I'm not calling you fat, like I'm calling myself little skinny. <laughs> I'm glad Jenny is a good sport and she could laugh about that because my feelings probably would have been hurt. <laughs> but yeah, gotta love these two. Switching gears. <laughs> also, just to keep you in the loop, Shida received some disappointing news from her doctor. Her egg count is low, which means if she and Bilal want to have a natural childbirth spontaneously, they need to start trying ASAP. You're born with about a million eggs. There's probably about two and a half percent of those million eggs left. So, you know, I would definitely say I would not wait more than six months if you do want to try to get started and having a baby because every month, your reserve is gonna be going down. The numbers are low and it could hinder a successful pregnancy. Of course, this news has Shida emotional and anxious. When I heard Dr. Marabali said that my ovarian reserves were low, I felt like hearing him say that I could never have children. And while Bilal feels for her, it's always hard to, you know, see someone you love, you know, um, you know, kind of get emotional. He doesn't seem to be budging. Uh, at the same time, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into having a children. Anybody who has a child knows that. So it's not a matter of like, oh, let's just get at it, you know. Mm, Bilal, uh-uh. You can't allow fear to hold you back from making one of your wife's biggest dreams come true. A few episodes ago, he admitted his main concern is that they will have a baby and Shida will leave him because that's what happened in his previous marriage. But I'm not his pass. That part. I understand being cautious, but your future can be better than your past. Just because it's happened before doesn't mean it has to happen again. Who knows? This baby could be the best thing for him right now. A child would be a blessing. Speaking of a blessing, I have one more update for you before we get into Michael and Angela. These are the people that consider to be decision-making people in the family. Usman takes Kim to meet his mom to get her blessing for them to get married. And his mom and brothers, they were not having it. Concerning Kimberly, I get shocked. 
Really, I get shocked. I don't know why Usman like this type of woman. I don't know, actually. Kim is the second older white woman he has brought home. Things clearly didn't work out with his ex-wife, Lisa. Plus, his mom wants him to have kids. I mean, she literally looks at Kim in disgust. Just turn around. I don't think we can support this issue. What makes it all worse is that Kim buys his mom a cow as a gift. And I'm telling you, milk it, cut it open, eat all the beef, take all the beef out of it, sell it. I don't care. Whatever she wants to do, it's her gift. But when the cow showed up at the house, his family actually got offended. Mommy, do you know what I'm thinking? Mommy, do you know what I'm thinking? Mommy, do you know what I'm thinking? Yeah, I bribe him. Bribe? It's not a bribe. That, that is so not a bribe. So I do. that's other woman brought a, a, a sheep or, or goats. Oh. Usman tried to use the same trick twice. You gotta be smarter than that. They're probably thinking, oh, they take us as a joke. You must think that I'm stupid. Now, if Usman's family ends up taking that cow, that would be something. May I say no, something? You're May I say something, please? Yeah, I was on my door. Come on. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go in there. Go in there, come back to the house. I'm going to go in there. May I speak? Yeah, I'm ready. May I say something, please? Um, oh, no, 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 no. They don't need to get married anyway. <laughs> As you can see, a lot went down this episode, but now it's time to get into the biggest must-see moment. Last night, things got so heated. It was like worse than a nightmare. It's the day after Angela and Michael's confrontation, and she's at her hotel. I just changed my flights, and I'll be leaving Nigeria later today. She tells the camera that the moment she lands in the U.S., she's going to file for divorce, and she's pulling the visas. I don't have that much time before Michael's visa can be approved. And right now, the way Michael's been acting makes me feel like he's a damn scammer. I know when I've lost the fight, I've lost it. And it's time to go home. When she said that, I was like, is she really gonna go home? That would be very mature of Angela. I would have been impressed. But lo and behold, just when you think she's really about to leave Nigeria, her friend Renee talks her into having a face-to-face -face conversation with Michael. And I'll admit, I get her reasoning. This is a long way to come for love. We came here for her to work on her marriage and as her friend, it wouldn't be good if I just let her leave and she didn't get answers and had unfinished business. No matter what he's done, and I get upset, Michael's always had my feelings in hand, you know? There's no sorries no more. He's cocky. Did you see how he loved the car more than he loved me? Yeah, he was pretty pissed. And we're even... Over his car. It's like he loves social media more than he loves me. She loves social media. It seems like she's given so much power to it when social media is not their main issue. It's much deeper than that. Why should I keep putting effort, all this energy, in trying to change him if he really just used me for the visa? Is this what you call trying to change him? Why should I keep putting effort, all this energy, in trying to change him if he really just used me for the visa? You can't change somebody. You can only inspire them to change. And nothing about this is inspirational. Stay till tomorrow or the next day. Just chill. Anyway, Angela decides to stay, and when she gets to the restaurant to meet with Michael, she struts in. Literally. Once she sits down, I don't know if her nerves started to get the best of her or what, but she throws a shot back. Cool. Meanwhile, Michael is in the car outside the restaurant, and it seems as if he's scared to get out. I don't blame him. I've never been so angry in my life. I couldn't sleep all through the night. I was thinking about everything. I'm shocked and uh, dumbfounded. Angela flew thousands of miles down to Nigeria all because of anger. She came here to prove a point. At this moment, the only point she's proving is that our marriage is over. Now. <laughs> I want to believe Michael, but you know what? We'll get to him in a minute. Let's move on to the part where they meet face to face. Yeah. 
Can I get a waitress, please? Uh, can I get a hello? Can I get three shots of vodka and one Heineken, please? Three shots? Angela, are we trying to have a part two of last night? There's already one on the table. Three? To each their own. Michael's reaction to her request <laughs> says it all, though. Is this a turn-up sesh, or are we here to talk about major issues? You gotta talk, because you know what you did. Let me tell you. You don't make your wrong. You, sh you, you started the... I started it? Do you think what you've done is acceptable? Yes, the man's on Instagram, and he blocked you because you'll be tripping. Excuse my grammar, but... Text messages, oh, you're in pain, laugh out loud. Is that funny to you? You know the difference between you and I, Michael? I have a heart. I'm a mean bitch. I fight in a goddamn minute and I with you. You have no heart, man. I have a seeds. If you think you're going to keep that Instagram, you got a wrong bitch, man. <laughs> you got a wrong bitch, man. Oh, let the man make some money on social media like you do. And allow him to be free to move as he pleases. Who wants to feel like they're in jail in a relationship? Angela's acting like a warden. Yeah, God, that wrong bitch, man. And think about it. She's mad off of assumptions. She's doing all of this because she thinks Michael is talking to other women. She has no evidence and no proof. Let's discuss, okay? You've, you've said all what you have to say. I Let me tell you. I ain't Please. said nothing I wanted to say. That's just a goddamn appetizer, mother Angela said she didn't want me to talk to her, but Angela doesn't listen. It's always about her, make her, make her happy and uh, do things in her own way, which is not supposed to be so. I'm her husband for crying out loud. It's not one-sided. Yeah, it can come off very selfish. Pull up your goddamn phone. For what? So I can look at it, I'm your wife, let me see it. Angela demands that Michael gives her his phone and she does not let it go. You got bitches in your phone, you're No scared. bitches, stop it. Let ah. me see. I want to see everything. What was that? I want to see everything. At first, I thought it was a little sexual tension or something. Let ah. me see. I want to see everything. Your DMs and Instagram? But then you just see Michael retreat. I guess it was a power move that worked. Can I see your phone, please? It's my privacy. So is that a no? I said no. Michael goes on to say that he's not giving Angela his phone because he's afraid she's going to break it. I'm worried she's going to slam it on the floor. Show me that goddamn gun, man. Show you what? The whole phone. We are not here for that. I will definitely show you, but not here. Then give me the phone, put my pocket book. You see how simple? But right when Angela thought she had him, Got your ass. Michael pulls his own slick move. Are you gonna hold a pocketbook all night about your phone, really? Leave it. Just leave me Put like the this. goddamn purse up Leave there. it. Look at the hand on this mother purse. What is it? Leave You're so leave scared. It. Leave it. Come on. You don't take a genius. Nobody's pretending on their phone unless you got something to hide. No, Angela, no. At this point, let's forget about Michael and other women. Y'all, communication sucks. And you have zero respect for him. Zero. Let's address the real issues here. I am not here to, to fight. I'm not, I'm here to make peace, okay? Take your phone, take your phone. Okay, I don't I like it. I don't give a don't what you like. like. It. Okay, this is bad. Yeah, thank you. Give my goddamn all. I am real for you. You're fake to me, man. That's heart breaking. I'm gone. Nah, Come here, come. And that right there is why I am done feeling bad for Michael. I know feelings are involved and that can make things complicated, but when is enough enough? Yeah, we've all been dumb in relationships. And if you think you haven't, you're probably being dumb in one now. <laughs> I'm just kidding, yeah. But when it comes to Michael, it's like having that one friend who is in a relationship that they know they have no business being in. And they keep coming to you complaining about how bad it is. 
There's a moment where you say, okay, look, I love you, but I am not about to stress over your unhappiness anymore. You're choosing to stay in something that's not good for you. I'm getting on my plane. No, you. You have hurt me. What I've been through with this man, is he worth it anymore? I'm tired of being strong. I'm tired of being like, I gotta not show my emotions. Well, Angela, whether you believe it or not, you are showing your emotions. You definitely are. In my opinion, all this just boils down to Angela being afraid. She's terrified of being vulnerable. And a lot of people are, but that doesn't make it okay for you to lash out and hurt others instead. Next week, they meet up again. And thankfully, it seems like this time they're actually going to talk. Like this, I can't trust you. You broke, you broke trust to me. The TikTok, you were online, you know, dreading a, a man, like flexing. I think both of us make mistakes, but she makes me look like a bad guy. It's sickening. Call out the BS, Michael. All right, 90 Day fans fam. Thanks for hanging with me. Make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.